He's for the revolution. <laughs> welcome back. Hey, welcome back. <laughs> I'm just you. you can't. We're just Donald Uh-oh. Trump has changed this race in a way that every dinner table across this country <laughs> is now debating the Donald Trump question. Especially Absolutely. yours. Especially mine. <laughs> we were just talking about this in the commercial break. So we are honored to have, uh, no matter what side you're on, Donald Trump himself uh, on the show this morning. Mr. Trump, can you hear us? Good morning. Yes, I can. Hi, Tucker. Hi. So around morning. these dinner tables, you're, 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 you're taking up all the conversation around these dinner tables. Is that surprising? Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know, but we had an amazing rally last night in Mississippi that thousands and thousands of people had filled up a you know, a massive arena. It was packed. And actually there was an overflow going over to the convention center. It was it was an incredible evening. So what are you do- what are you doing in Mississippi with the Iowa caucuses a month from now? Mississippi's not till uh, the first week in March. Why campaign right. there instead of Iowa? Well you know, it's interesting. It's a good question actually, but we've had such support there and I've been in Iowa and we're doing great in Iowa. I've been in Iowa a lot. I'll be there on Monday, I'll be there on Tuesday. I'm gonna be spending a lot of time in Iowa, and we have incredible friends in Iowa, but we've also got great friends in the South and in Mississippi, and they've been asking us for so long and so hard, and they said we have this arena, which was a beautiful arena, and it was uh, it was just packed. I mean, it was just great. So it was something I did, and and uh, it was an exciting, it was an exciting evening, I will tell you. It was, it, there was a lot of love in the room. I will say that some some people have been pointing to the fact that you're 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 moving towards a national campaign now. They've been noticing that you haven't been mentioning much of your GOP rivals lately on the campaign trail and focusing your attention on Hillary Clinton. Are they accurate in that assessment? Well, I do really mention them a lot, and I do talk about them, some with respect and some with a little bit less than that, but I do talk about <laughs> them a lot. I, I also talk about Hillary Clinton a lot, and they talk about me. You know, in their last debate, they mentioned me nine times. They didn't mention anybody else. And believe me, the last person that she wants to go against is me. You know, sort of interesting. I was watching Chuck Todd was saying, oh, he heard that they'd like to, he was given the information they'd like to run against Trump. I said, Chuck, you got to understand something. When they say they want to run against you, that's the one they don't want to run against, okay, just so you understand. The last person, and you see that even from the last four or five days, the last person they want to run against is me, by far. And I'm also doing really well. A poll came out, I'm beating them and and beating her in the polls, and I think I'm the one that can beat her the most easily, and I think it's going to be not that tough because her record is terrible. Why, Why wouldn't they want to run against you? Well, I think it's going to be a tough campaign for them. I've, you know, I think I've shown that. I look at how many people on the Republican side they've come against me and they've gone down. I mean, they've gone down big league, and I think that she, frankly, is easier to bring down than the Republicans that I've already uh, brought down. Because if you look at, I mean, they have better records than she does. She has a terrible record as Secretary of State. I mean, she's literally created ISIS. If you look at her between her and Obama, they're the ones. We have this big ISIS problem they created with their bad policies and their bad thinking. Well, so we... I think that I think that a lot of people are saying that, uh, and a lot of people are now saying that I will, I will win and I'll I'll beat her very easily. And I also think one other thing, I'll bring a lot of people into the into the voters' booth that nobody else is going to bring in. The one of the uh, one of the networks I think it was CNBC did a poll recently say, if I run. They're going to have the largest turnout in the history of presidential elections, which I really think, just look at your debate scores. And the people that come in, for the most part, are going to be voting more for Trump than for Clinton. Right. So and I think a lot of people are going to come in and vote, which is a great thing for the country, because, so you know, voter turnout's very low. Hillary Clinton's response has been, well, you're a sexist, and her supporters have been saying, you're a sexist, to which you have said, well, wait, she's married to Bill Clinton. Uh, You're the only person who said that. Do you think she'll continue to go after you as a sexist? No, I don't think so. I don't think too much because, you know, her her defense is she's got a problem. She's married to a person that's uh, a serious abuser, and uh, and I mean at the highest level. And she, you know, she's not an innocent victim. She was the one that uh, would go along with them in in this whole game that they play. And, And you look at what happened with some of the people that, he took advantage of, and then she gets involved. So she's not like the innocent person sitting by the side and, uh, you know, with tears in her eyes. She's a person that was very much involved. So I think she's not. I th- oh, she was playing it heavy until I said this. Now, maybe she will, maybe she won't. I really don't care one way or the other. But uh, she was playing up the sexist stuff heavy, and as soon as I brought this up, all of a sudden, as you probably noticed, it stopped. Now, maybe it'll start, and if it does, I'll hit them very hard. And if it doesn't, 
uh, that's all right, too. Okay, so you have some clips uh, of when you were talking about Muslims. Those clips were included in a terrorist recruitment video, Al-Shabaab, not ISIS, but Al-Shabaab. Uh, some of the mainstream media have been out in full force talking about how well, you know, pointing to Hillary's comments about you and saying, yeah, you, sh you know, she was right. She predicted this was going to happen. Well, I watched NBC this morning, and it was a total lie what they said. They said, oh, maybe she was right, maybe she was right. Well, she wasn't right because it wasn't done then, and it was al-Shabaab. She said it was ISIS, it was al-Shabaab. And, of course, at some point they're going to do something. I'm the front runner by a lot. Uh, you know, we're, I guess I'm leading her in the, the most recent poll. Uh, so they're going to do something. But what does that mean? We're not supposed to speak about uh, the enemy, and they are the enemy, by the way. We're not supposed to speak about the enemy, because if we do, we're going to be in a propaganda. Everybody knows anybody's going to be in a propaganda. Her husband is in a propaganda, you know, part of ISIS's propaganda. I think it's an ISIS. And they really put him down as a degenerate. If you look at what they talk about him, they talk about all of his scandals. And, uh, you know, he's, she doesn't mention that, but he's down there in a very negative way, in very negative fashion. So, uh, you know, it's like one of those things, but it wasn't ISIS, and it wasn't made at the time, and she lied. But I watched mainstream media. I watched, uh, I watched ABC and I watched NBC, and the way they covered it so, and frankly, CNN, they covered it so inaccurately, it was disgusting, and they should be ashamed of themselves. You made some comments the other night in Biloxi, Mississippi, about President Obama and his getting ready to announce executive action on gun control. He's going to meet with uh, his Attorney General Loretta Lynch on Monday to go over some of the finer details of that. You said whatever executive action that the President puts forth, if you were President, you would unsign it, you would rip it up, uh, you would veto it. Um, do you think the president's going to pull the trigger on executive action for gun control? Well, he's going to do something, and nobody knows exactly what that is. But, you know, we have a Second Amendment that's very important, and people need that, and in many cases, for protection. And uh, we're going to protect the Second Amendment. And if he signs something, we are going to terminate it as a very early step when I get to office. I mean, the only thing good about executive action is that if you have somebody like Obama that has totally taken advantage of that situation, and it's it's ridiculous what he's been doing he's been getting away with murder now at the border the courts have actually you know he did an executive action at the border and it was very interesting because the courts have actually upheld us uh... and uh... you know sort of at least on a temporary basis there are many executive actions we're going to terminate his executive action on the border i will have to see what he's got with respect to guns i don't know that he's going to do it but i guess everybody's telling me and if i'm watching you folks He's yeah. going to side executive action having to do with guns. You've been critical. And You've been critical of Congress, absolutely. So if you're president, the, you know the, the complaint from the, this White House is that Congress won't do anything. So we've got to take action. Are you going to be deferential to Congress if you become president? Are we going to see well, a lot of Trump executive know, actions? Right. You know the the system works where you have Congress and you're supposed to get along with Congress and cajole and get into a room and work out deals and make compromises. He doesn't do that because he's unable to do it because he's spending three weeks playing golf in uh, California. You know, it's hard to do that when you're playing golf all day long. I mean, he's been, it's like he's on the PGA Tour. Uh, he, he plays so much golf. But uh, in all fairness, you have to get along, and you have to, you know, get people to do what you're supposed to do, and everybody gets into a room, whether it's Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill or whoever it may be, and you get things done, and you do it in a proper way. He's not doing that, and he's using executive action, to his own benefit and you know in two years or four years or five years the courts overrule him and in the meantime he'll be back onto a new golf course playing more golf so he doesn't care so look he's using it incorrectly and nobody ever used it like this and what's taking place and especially if he's going to be using it with uh, amending the second amendment by playing with executive action that would be disgraceful, in my opinion. Okay, we're, we're totally out of time, Mr. Trump, but I just want to ask you, since you own so many golf courses, is the president a good golfer? Well, you know, I've seen this swing. It looks okay. I mean, it doesn't look bad, and he's, uh, he certainly gets enough practice, <laughs> but it looks, it looks okay. I don't want to knock his golf game. I'd like to play him. I would like to play him, however, for the presidency. That, that I would like to do. <laughs> Donald Trump, thanks for joining us this morning. Okay.